The London Film Festival continues in full force as one of the city's most acclaimed filmmakers finally has a film present at the festival. This is my review of Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho. We follow Eloise, an aspiring fashion designer who is mysteriously able to enter the 1960s where she encounters a dazzling wannabe singer, Sandy. But the glamour is not all it seems to be, and soon enough the dreams of the past start to crack and splinter into something darker, making Ellie's present a nightmare. Before I properly start with my thoughts, I want to know what you think of Last Night in So. If you're excited, if you've seen it, what are your thoughts on it? What are your thoughts on Edgar Wright as a filmmaker? Anything and everything down there in the comments below. Start the conversation. It is always the most important part. And if you like what you see here, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any further London Film Festival coverage and of course any conversation about your favorite movies and TV. Watching this film, and I've seen it twice at this point, was a transfixing experience. Like the main character in the film, Eloise, I moved from a small country into the big city of London. I obviously moved from very much farther away, but still I moved to this big city with the hopes of following, pursuing and achieving my dreams. So there's a lot in that sense on a personal level to relate to. And speaking of Eloise herself, Thomasin McKenzie gives a captivating performance. We already knew she was great. This is probably my favorite performance that she's ever given. She's stellar in this film and the entire film revolves around her. She has to carry this on her shoulders, but she is also very well paired with Anya Taylor-Joy, who is utterly hypnotizing in this. She's tremendous in this film, and I love the symmetry between these two characters and how they're both broken in their own way. Broken dreams would be the main theme of this film and we see that symbolism come to life in a literal sense through cracks in mirrors. That is some great imagery that Wright loves to use in this film to great effect. And with Edgar Wright, you know that for as much style as you have, you also have a lot of substance. And this film definitely has it. It goes into places I did not expect to talk about much deeper stuff than I expected and all the better for it. And the unraveling mystery throughout the film is really engaging and enthralling. Eloise, from the very beginning, it is established in the first scene, so it's not a spoiler, she can see ghosts. And that is a great hook to go into a mystery horror horror film and I think that also collages the two worlds past and present together really strongly. The city of London itself is captured vibrantly and very authentically, both in its aesthetic beauty, its immenseness, but also with a provocative deep dive into its seeding dark underbelly side. Which clearly shows Wright's influences for this film with his terrific scares throughout this film. He brings a lot of his Argento and his Hitchcock and collages them together to make his own thing, which I really dug. And this is simply put, the best cinematography I have seen this entire year. The use of the lush neon lighting is gorgeous. This is Edgar Wright's most elegantly directed film to date, so it immerses you in the aesthetic beauty of the city, but in juxtaposition it highlights its most dark elements. Not to mention the technical aspect where a lot of these shots are tracking and panning through mirrors and it's just incredible to see and to think about the incredible work that went into them to the point where it goes into such detail with specific locations the city the streets the pubs the bars they become characters in themselves throughout this entire film and this incredible set design is paired with immaculate sound and costumes which are very different in past and present and i personally love the decade hopping aspect of this film i love what it gives to the story and i love how immediately on a visual standpoint and even the sound you can immediately recognize the 60s and the present and how different they are the main drawback I have with this film is present in its conclusion, unfortunately, so it leaves kind of this bittersweet taste on me. And that is because the hook of Ellie seeing ghosts, which is 
so great, so unique for this film, is kind of lost more and more as the mystery unravels. We stop depending on this hook to solve the mystery. And as much as I love the execution in itself of the final moments of this film, there's a missing relationship. And that's all I'm going to say, not to spoil anything, that could have strengthened the impact, emotionally speaking, of the big climax. But Last Night in Soho is ultimately a hauntingly gorgeous, intense thrill ride through London and its history. With incredible performances, not only from our leads that I mentioned, but Matt Smith, my favorite doctor, is fantastic and a heart-shattering final performance from Dame Diana Ring. In many ways, this is Wright's most daring film and the biggest departure from his usual style. This is absolutely a horror classic in the making. I'm giving Last Night in Soho an A-. minus. Those are my thoughts on Last Night in Soho. What are your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comments below anything and everything about this film, about Edgar Wright. Start the conversation. It's the most important part. And hey, make sure to check out all the LFF coverage. There should be a playlist right up here, right now, in many videos coming very soon, including the French Dispatch, Passing, The Power of the Dog, Mass, and many others. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to watch all the other LFF reviews that you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next one. So until then, love each other and love the movies.